Well, um, I posted a video yesterday on Blue Origin, kind of asking the question, um, where are they? Um, as far as New Shepard, their last flight for New Shepard was NS-12, which was December of last year. And this is supposed to be a um, reusable rapid return to flight vehicle. And I was wondering, you know, they were, they made the promise that the next flight would be manned. Um, and they actually said it would be uh, last year. And then they said it would be, there would be a manned flight that would occur in 2020 um, that they had already, you know, decided that they were going to put up Blue Origin employees or Amazon employees of some sort um, on this first crewed uh, flight again. This is this this vehicle is suborbital. It is for uh, basically space tourism and scientific instrumentation uh, to go up into high high altitudes, uh, high atmospheric research stuff like that. And um, it's funny. I posted this video yesterday, just kind of asking the questions like, where are they? Have has Blue Origin bit off more than they can chew? Are they um, in trouble of some sort? Um, what's what's going on with New Shepard? Why is their flight cadence, their launch cadence has gone down the toilet? Um, literally, they used to do two to three flights per year, and it's been a whole year almost, and uh, and no flight. So, I mean, December of last year, and the one before that was in May. So, it doesn't look like that this vehicle is very reusable. Um, I'm not sure what they're going on. I know they have more than one. Um, I believe they have four or five uh, vehicles. Um, this, uh, the one that was used in December of last year, it was the fifth flight in a row for that one. So I think they're only using one at a time. Um, so I, you know, each vehicle obviously is a is a newer iteration. I don't know if they're updating the older vehicles or if they're even building any more. Um, as, as I think their focus is on New Glenn and on the Blue Ball. Uh, uh, moon, moon, uh, lunar lander, so blue moon, uh, lunar lander. Um, and that one that's no longer considered a blue origin, it's the national team, which is a conglomeration between blue origin and other companies, um, legacy companies that um, have a long history in uh, space flight. So, uh, anyway, I posted that video yesterday. And then this morning, I just got an email from Blue Origin. So, um, it in that video or in that email, they announced that their next flight, NS13, is scheduled for September 24th at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. So this launch is out of Texas, so they're on the Central Time Zone. So 10 a.m. Um, this Thursday. So, like I said, they don't put their launch schedule out very far in advance. It's always they 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 announce it right at the last minute. Um, literally, today's the twenty second, and they're they just sent out a press release that they're going to launch this on the twenty fourth. Now, um, okay, so that's that's good. There's um, there's some life, some activity from Blue Origin. However, it is not crewed like they promised it would be. Um, it is interesting. I'm, I'm going to read this email here. It says New Shepard will fly 12 commercial payloads and back to, to space and back on this mission, including the deorbit, descent, and landing sensor demonstration, um, which is for their uh, uh, lunar missions. So, um, using NASA's Deep Space Technology Mission Directorate under a Tipping Point Partnership, whatever that means. Okay, so this is the first payload to fly mounted on the exterior of the new Shepard booster rather than inside the capsule, opening the door to a wider range of future high altitude sensing sampling and exposure payloads. Um, so, yeah, I, they're strapping it to the outside of the booster. I'm not sure what the big deal about that is, but they think it's something cool, I guess. Um, the lunar landing sensor demo. I don't know how they say that this is the sensor that's going to basically for the Artemis program that's going to um, test deorbit and descent um, 
I don't know how effective of a test that's going to be since the New Shepard is not an orbital rocket. It is suborbital, so it's not going to be able to test the, the deorbiting um, part of it, at least not the entire deorbit uh, process. So <clears throat> I think that the emails, the way they're worded, it seems a little bit um, more hype than it should be. Um, but Blue Origin does not have orbital capabilities at this time. Uh, they've never done an orbital flight. The, the New Shepard isn't capable of orbital flight. Um, interesting, Jeff Bezos left a comment on Twitter once uh, where someone had asked, you know, how difficult is it to, to go from suborbital to orbital? Is there a big difference? And he said, oh, there's not really much difference at all. And that's just laughable because to go – Suborbital, you just have to go straight up, and you don't have to go fast at all. Um, you just go up. I believe it's a five-minute flight up, and then a six or seven-minute descent down. It's not, um, you know, the speeds achieved are not great. Whereas to get to orbital velocity, you're looking at, you know, Mach 25. Uh, so you have to have a much more capable rocket to. Um, to do that and to say that there's not really a difference um, is ridiculous. So um, with that said, I don't see any wisdom in going from this New Shepard uh, vehicle, which, um, yeah, you know, it's kind of cool that they plan to take tourists up, but achieving suborbital flight, you know, there's college kids that have done this um, with little sounding rockets and things like that. It's not any breakthrough technology. Landing the rocket, yeah, that's kind of a breakthrough technology. Propulsive landing is not uh, anything new. I mean, we propulsively landed on the moon. You know, that's the only way you can land on the moon. So um, we did it back in the 60s. We did it all through the 70s. Propulsive landing has been around. We've never done it on Earth, where you have a much a stronger gravity than the moon. Uh, so that's, you know, that's different. You have a, a thicker atmosphere. Well, you have, you have an atmosphere on Earth. So landing propulsively when you have an atmosphere, when you have um, re-entry problems dealing with heat and, and doing it with a gravity that's much stronger than you have on the moon. That's new. Um, and yeah, they did. That's great. Good for them. Um, but they haven't landed an orbital rocket. And um, that's, I think they're going to find that's a huge difference. And, and to go from, uh, you know, to go from this little suborbital uh, rocket for space tourism to a super heavy uh, launch vehicle that's bigger than the Saturn V, um, that's not a good iteration, in my opinion. That's, that's going to be a huge um, there's going to be a huge cost to, to doing that, I think, with the with their learning curves. Um, they're going to have to, I think, do some things in between here and there. And I don't think the New Shepard is the vehicle to do that. But we'll see. Um, Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time, we're going to see that launch. And it's, you know, you get 10 to 12 minutes of entertainment. You see it go up. Uh, and then the... Capsule separates and parachutes down and lands in the desert. Um, with the booster comes down, it falls straight down and then does a um, suicide burn and lands back on the, uh, I think there's a land, separate landing site or it lands back on the launch site. It's not much of a launch facility. It's basically a concrete pad. Um, there's no launch tower or anything like that, like you have out in Florida or other places. So um, it should be... Uh, broadcast live on, on YouTube. So go check that out. And um, I'll be watching it too. So I'll, maybe I'll make a video and do some comments after that. But anyway, at least it's good to see that uh, Blue Origin's not dead as far as New Shepard goes. Um, and it looks like there there's still some activity, even though their launch cadence is dropped down to one launch per year. Um, and hopefully, if it, hopefully it'll pick back up, but it looks like it's dwindling down instead of up. So, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, um, I hope you liked this video. Uh, I'll share uh, uh, screenshots of the email so you can take a look at it. Or if I can find a link to the website, I'll do that. And um, 
and check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you think Blue Origin's got much of a future in the commercial space industry, or are they just uh, kind of trying to trying too hard? I don't know. Uh, I think they are, but uh, at least you know I'm not. I'm not. I don't hate them. I want to see them succeed, but I think they're going about it the wrong way. So anyway. Let me know what you think, and uh, give the video a like, and subscribe, and leave a comment. Thanks.